The International Monetary Fund is warning that the new Omicron coronavirus variant is likely to delay the global economic recovery from the pandemic. The fund is expecting to downgrade its forecasts for world growth this year and next. And that's even though the World Health Organization says it has no evidence yet of any deaths connected to Omicron. The new variant is spreading rapidly in many countries. South Africa, in particular, is seeing an alarming wave of infections. More young children are being hospitalised, and authorities are concerned that people who've already had COVID-19 are being reinfected. Healthcare workers in South Africa have had their hands full since scientists there first detected the Omicron variant last week and it's been found across South Africa. We are also now experiencing such a rapid surge in, in case numbers that it is actually uh, quite frightening. I am moderately confident that the country will be able to cope. Uh, on the other hand, the, 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 the rapidly increasing numbers are, you know, are, are a nasty surprise and I wonder what the future holds for us. Just a quarter of the population have been fully vaccinated. But it's not clear yet how far the current vaccines protect against an infection with Omicron. We are seeing a lot of breakthrough infections in vaccinees, which is, of course, a worry. We are also seeing reinfections in people who have previously been infected uh, during one of the previous waves. Uh, but the majority of infections so far are mild. That said, we, we have to say that it's still early days and, and as we know, um, you know, to, to become clinically severe, um, there, there will have to be 10 to 14 days or more after becoming infected, so it's probably too early to tell. South Africa's public health authorities warn that more children and young adults are being hospitalised with the coronavirus. Many countries have placed new restrictions on travellers from South Africa and even shut borders. And the scientists who alerted the world to the Omicron variant are facing a backlash at home. But critics uh, within the country that is now very hard hit by all these travel bans, um, they are blaming us, the, the scientists, for actually doing sequencing and, and, and sharing our results, which I think is, is, not, not, is, is quite misguided. <laughs> Face masks are mandatory and there are limits on the number of people who can attend indoor and outdoor gatherings. But Omicron continues its invisible race across South Africa. And for more, we can speak to journalist and molecular biologist Kai Kupferschmidt, who joins us from here in Berlin. It's good to have you on the programme again. Now, scientists say the Omicron variant is spreading more than twice as quickly as the Delta variant we just heard there. More kids are being uh, hospitalised. How worried do we really need to be? Well, I think, so scientists are still trying to get a clearer picture of what exactly Omicron has in store. It, you know, imagine a big puzzle and we're only just getting the first puzzle pieces, but certainly those first puzzle pieces, you know, all add to the concern. We now have some preliminary data that shows that this virus can, in fact, reinfect people, certainly people who've had, who've gone through an infection before and recovered. Um, and it does seem to be spreading very fast, though that's always very hard to tell in the early days whether there are, you know, certain super spreading events, for instance, that make it appear to be spreading faster than it actually will in the long run. But certainly, um, I think if we've learned anything from the last two years is that in a situation like this, you know, we should rather act fast and be worried right now and then, you know, breathe a sigh of relief if we actually, if it doesn't turn out to be as bad. Right. Now, the World Health Organization is saying that it has no evidence of any deaths linked to Omicron, um, yet countries are racing to impose stricter pandemic measures, travel bans are in place. Uh, would you say all of these restrictions are an overreaction? So, I, I don't think it's an overreaction. I. I do think that travel bans, you know, you have to be very careful about what you do with travel bans. All they do is buy you a little bit of time and they only make sense for a very short time because once the virus spreads, you know, wide in your own communities anyway, it doesn't really make sense to impose them and they have a, you know, fairly big cost uh, attached to them. So, 
but but the fact that we haven't seen any deaths so far in the in in South Africa from Omicron doesn't really tell us that much yet because it's still really early days. We know that it takes you know two weeks for people once they go to the hospital and then for for deaths actually to to be reported. So I think at the moment I wouldn't read too much into it. I mean we're all kind of hoping that maybe you know it does turn out to be a milder variant that spreads fast but is milder but we really can't say that at the moment and we certainly shouldn't pin our hopes on that and not act and prepare. Okay, so obviously there's a lot more to learn about this variant, but of course Omicron is the latest in a string of coronavirus mutations since the start of the pandemic. Do we need to prepare ourselves for a potentially never-ending series of new mutations? Or, you know, is there anything that governments around the world could be doing better to try and bring this to an end? Well, what's very clear is that as long as this virus can spread in this you know, huge amount of people that it is spreading in at the moment, mutations will keep arising. And some of those mutations will give this virus advantages, whether in transmissibility or in reinfecting people, it might get around vaccine immunity. And that's just something that we have to live with unless we really try to do the hard work of suppressing the numbers. I mean, we do have some experience with a virus that keeps changing, that's the flu. And of course, it might very well be that this turns into a virus that stays with us. That's certainly what it looks like, that, that SARS-CoV-2 will be with us for the long run. But even then, we are going to have to do the hard work of making sure that we're prepared for every season when it comes and just hope that it does indeed over time become a little bit milder. But that's by no means a given. All right, Kai Kupferschmidt, as ever, thank you so much. Thank you. OK, let's take a look now at some more developments in the pandemic. Germany's BioNTech says it should be able to adapt its COVID-19 vaccine swiftly to deal with the Omicron variant. The Czech Republic is preparing to mandate vaccinations for people over 60, as well as for medical workers and police. And a man in Italy wore a fake silicon arm to try and trick a nurse into giving him a jab so that he could get a COVID-19 health certificate. 